Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber. In the rapid advance of EV charging techniques, we're seeing a persistent and continuing interest in battery swapping, augmenting the classic plug and play charging methods. In this video, we'll discuss the backers of this technology, EV manufacturers who've steered clear of the battery swaps, and finally, we'll present the advantages and drawbacks of this technology along with some real world examples in our EV service center. So what is battery swapping for EVs? Well, simply put, it's the process of taking out a battery, like this flashlight battery, swapping it with a good one, a process in which the depleted battery in your EV is swapped out for one with a full charge. Simple, right? Let's take a deeper look. Let's start with the backers of this technology. Fisker is the latest manufacturer to invest their resources in adding battery swapping to their charge options. They recently announced a partnership with a company called Ample. Now Ample is an energy company that uses modular battery swapping to restore 100% charge to any EV in just a few minutes. Their true green solution is designed to be fast, cheap, and as convenient as gas station refueling, making it easier for drivers to transition to electricity without any compromises. Their aim is to become a supplier and one-stop shop for EV manufacturers who don't want to invest in their own branded battery swap stations. So Ample has a revenue generating partnership with Fisker, who intends to bring the first ocean SUV with swappable batteries to market by the first quarter of 2024. Now Ample is neither the inventor nor the pioneer of this swappable battery technology. To find its origin, we need to look at Israel. The concept of electric vehicle EV battery swaps has been around for several years, but the first company to introduce it and promote the idea was a startup called Better Place, founded in 2007 by entrepreneur Shai Agassi. This company was based in Israel and aimed to build a network of battery swap stations that would allow EV drivers to quickly and conveniently exchange their depleted battery for a fully charged one. However, Better Place filed for bankruptcy in 2013 due to a variety of challenges, including high infrastructure costs and slow adoption of EVs at the time. Neo in China is also known for their battery swapping stations with some 200 across China. NIO has produced something that the other EV manufacturers have not been able to do or willing to do, a series of successful and highly regarded network of battery swapping stations. In fact, NIO has a novel design rather than do a bricks and mortar construction effort, pouring slabs, getting permits, building uh, walls, they actually have swapping stations that are modular and they simply crane them into position and they're up and running within a short period of time. Not every manufacturer is on board with this charging method. The most notable is Tesla, who in 2013 announced that the Model S would feature battery swapping. Elon even did a demonstration on stage comparing the time it takes to fill a gas tank versus swapping the battery in a Model S. However, in 2015, Tesla announced that they would not be pursuing battery swaps, citing lack of demand from customers, and ultimately invested in their supercharger network instead. Not so well known as Renault Nissan's involvement in battery swaps. They partnered with Better Place, the originator for battery swap technology, in 2013. They had initial success with the Renault Fluence ZEs, selling hundreds of these cars and producing several battery swap stations in Israel. When Better Place filed for bankruptcy, Renault Nissan looked to China. Dong Feng became their partner of choice in producing a viable battery swap business model. The two companies planned to launch in 2020, but that never came to fruition. The project has yet to be officially scrapped, however, and is considered to be on hold. So Renault Nissan's explanation comes from their CEO Makoto Yoshida stating, it is really difficult for us to understand what kind of business model we can create with the battery swap technology. 
we need to understand first if there is a profit potential. So what do brands like Neo and Fisker see in this technology and what was considered by Tesla and Renault in their decision to pursue other options? Let's look at the benefits and drawbacks for a moment. The first and most obvious advantage of EV battery swapping is downtime, or lack of, which now more closely resembles an ICE vehicle refueling at a gas station in the neighborhood of five or six minutes or so. Without EV battery swapping, refueling an EV is around 20 to 30 minutes to charge. For long distance travel, a 20 to 30 minute stop cumulatively adds up to a lot of travel time. Next is battery leasing. NEO only allows battery swaps for customers who are leasing a battery for their vehicle. This means that the battery and all potential problems with it aren't yours. So you can kiss that $20,000 battery replacement goodbye. Since you don't purchase the battery with the vehicle, you also see lower upfront costs in purchasing an EV, which will lead to easier EV adoption. The first and most likely reason for lack of battery swapping station business adoption is the upfront costs. There is no current battery swap infrastructure in place. Plug-in chargers have become commonplace, and this is not the case with battery swap stations. So there's no network established. Lack of standardization is another barrier. No two car companies can seem to agree on standardizing anything in the EV world today, as most auto OEMs prefer to control their design strategies for battery packs as core technology. So EV battery variations vary not only between EV brands with no current standardization, but even within brands, since the Tesla Model S, for example, has five different batteries. And it is completely different from the Model 3, the Model Y, and eventually the Cybertruck and the Semi. This is fundamentally what prevents any kind of battery swapping station scaling. So another Pandora's box is the issue of battery quality. All batteries at the time of creation are created equal. It is after creation that variables can be inserted. What if your battery pack, which you have carefully charged in a temperature controlled environment, never charged past 80-90% and infrequently supercharged, is swapped with a previous owner's pack in an early free supercharged Model S who has been supplementing his income by driving for Uber and is constantly supercharging. The quality of the batteries received will vary greatly in a swapping program. A second consideration would seem to be battery age tracking methods needing to be established and subsequent constraints placed on swapping eligibility. Batteries outside a certain age threshold should be disqualified from the program. Otherwise, end-of-life batteries could be inserted at swapping stations merged with newer batteries with a longer lifespan. Someone will unfairly get stuck with a battery about to fail, and if it does, then what? Do they go back and swap again? These are just some of the challenges with battery swapping. What do you think about battery swapping? Is it a good idea or just another shiny object that came along in the EV world? Please tell us your comments below and while you're down there, drop a like. It helps get this video in front of more people. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pete Gruber.